Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is actually going to be the second cast I'm doing for BSL Hasu League. I did the second one out of order, but from the YouTube perspective, people will be none the wiser. Bottom right hand corner, we've got uh, Raj, or R O T J. I'll just go Raj. Uh, starting as the orange Protoss. Bottom left hand corner, we have Mitak, starting as the gray Zerg Mitak, returning to Hasu League. A strong competitor. Looks like that Overlord is not going to be a beneficial scale. This is going to be on Neo Sylphid. Round of 32 Group A, I'm extremely excited about this season of Hasu League because it feel, I'm not sure what has happened with all, maybe it's just the quality of players across the board, but it feels like, I mentioned this in the next video, then I'll be like, hey, this is the next video down the line, by the way, I have it a bit messed up. Reminder of the format really fast. First round is, uh, one, is best of one. Winner's match and loser's match is best of three. The final match, I believe, is best of three as well. Uh, and we go from there. Group A had one no-show. The other person in this group is none other than Sva, who is a talented Terran player, also an administ fellow administrator for the Artosis stream, was a participant at the New York LAN as well, so we got to see some of his play right there. I'm excited to see him in Hostile League, Urbmon, and a lot of the other, actually a good amount of the other, comp I'm trying to think of the other competitors off the top of my head that are in Hasu League. They're actually scattered through Hasu Gosu uh, and Pro League. Looks like Raj is going to end up with the first scout, which is going to be huge to start. Going for the pylon above gateway play. Sometimes this is can be somewhat vulnerable to early Zergling pressure, but looks like this is going to be a 12 hatch potentially, regardless. Drone going to scout bottom right. And actually, so ends up hurting Raj. So he's scouting 6 o'clock first, and then not seeing an overlord was trying to be a little bit sneaky and now he's going to top right hand corner after that so he's going to end up losing first scout as a result drone going to go ahead and scout bottom right another pylon in place here initial zealot being constructed and let's see if Mitak goes all the way into the main to confirm that there's no gas is going to go ahead and sneak in one of these days i want to see I, i've seen we saw it actually in a show match a long time ago with between cats and tasteless but eventually i want to see the drone sneak in and drop a proxy hatchery but Hatchery being built, looks like we're seeing a pretty quick gas, which suggests we might be seeing two hatch mutalisks. A slew of drones and a spawning pool being constructed. Usually if you're gonna save larva for a full cycle of zerglings to start, you wanna start right around this moment. So we'll see if the additional larva end up getting saved or whether they're gonna get expended for uh, drones overall, or for zerglings overall. Looks like the initial zealot is going to be constructed, or sorry, the uh, second zealot going to be constructed on follow-up. The first zealot making its way to the natural expansion this time with Scout. The probe moving this direction to provide some support. Two zerglings being built. The third larva just spawning. It's going to be a zergling as well, but the zealot able to get some chaos in the natural expansion. Drones very calmly being moved to that natural expansion. Drones trying to defend themselves. A pretty decent drill on this Zealot, but the Zealot able to get at least a drone kill nevertheless. Second drone kill right there. That's really going to disrupt the early economy, but pretty well defended by Mitak overall. Second Zealot, however, making its way into the main. Plenty of Zerglings to deal with it. Let's see if he's able to somehow sneak an additional kill. Great surround. So the Zealot not even able to get a shot off. The probe still remains. But having expended those two zealots so rapidly, let's see if he makes a push towards the natural expansion. Forge also being dropped. Nexus behind this. This should be a decent hold. Mitek taking some pretty heavy economic hits, actually, here to start losing those first two drones. And Raj doing a fantastic job of microing, or microing, macroing behind that. So pretty strong economy. The probe still trying to be to do what it can. It looks like we do have a a drone in position to grab a third. The Zerglings have Zergling speed now, making their way towards the natural. Never mind, this is a lot of Zerglings. I just missed the initial batch of Zerglings that were already taking down the gateway at the front. Some able to slip through. Cannon cancellation. And the gateway is going to drop. So the Zealots that are here are the only Zealots that are going to be produced. So now Midtech potentially turning this into a Zergling all-in. And the initial Zerglings able to get at least one cannon. They're going to get some shots on some additional cannons. Two more Zerglings making their way across. However, they haven't gotten a lot of probe kills. It looks like the, set, the initial cannon's going to drop. The gateway's redropped. So nice defense from Raj. Still a Zergling in the main, which is going to create a little bit of headache. But more Zerglings pouring out. So this is turning into an onslaught now. 
Mitek, I think recognizing how far he was, how far behind he was economically here to start, although he has, this is crazy. So he's gone for the Zergling Flood here, but he's still producing the third hatchery, which has me a bit puzzled because this is very, very all or nothing as far as a follow-up. Two cannons have been constructed and with the probes blockading, it can be a major challenge to blockade. The one advantage here is that gateway is still incomplete and the, uh, the probes have backed off. So, and now actually able to slip through the gap right as the probes moved off. The Zerglings able to flood into the main, so never mind. Gonna be able to force potentially cancellation. I don't, we'll have to check if Lair Tech has been built in the meantime. The Zerglings in the main giving Raj a huge headache. Let's see if they can get some probe kills as well. The probes trying to defend themselves. A lot of them are idle right this second. Raj having some trouble microing this. Drop the cannon, is able to get a good amount of kills, but this is still five Zerglings versus a Zealot with some probe support in the main. The Zerglings have speed, which means they're gonna be trouble. Do we have a layer? No, we do not have a layer. It's gonna be a transition to Hydralisten off the three bases. The drone count has resaturated to look equivalent. So Mitek, where for a second there, I was like, okay, he's gonna be somewhat economic behind. Now he's right back in it. The Zerglings, however, are not going to escape with their lives. The question is just how much damage are they going to be able to wreak in the main, still taking some shots. That cannon might have been worth its weight in gold. Next question is, this is a pretty sustainable amount of drones to go for a Hydralisk counter follow-up and the drones revealing the rally point. I, I think this is a mistake moving that drone, but I would be shocked to see a proxy hatchery here. It is possible. It is possible. Citadel of Dune is dropped. The Zergling should be able to spot that. Yeah, that drone being drawn back. But this could easily transition into a three hatchery Hydralisk bust. There's only two Zealots out. Leg speed is a ways away. And also, Mitak, with all of the shenanigans he's pulled early, has not given Raj an opportunity to scout. He's moving, his, this probe is gonna be vital to be able to spot these Hydralisks before they're out on the front in sufficient numbers. So Raj knows he needs to get some cannons down. So now seeing the Hydralisks making their way this direction, does he have enough to get some cannons out on the front? Plus one weapons a ways away. So there's one cannon. He might be able to get one more before Mittak is already flooding towards that natural. But Mittak has a pretty good window here before the, the Corsair is even out. So two additional cannons. If he gets a move on, he can get something done, but it looks like he's waiting for the upgrades to finish before he commits. So eight Hydralisks out towards the front that Corsair able to spot, get a little bit of information, plus one weapons was actually canceled to sneak another cannon out, which I think was a smart play from Raj overall, keeps him in the game. Mittak going for, it looks like a soft contain comparatively, the Corsair trying to take out overlords in between because we do have a Templar archives being constructed in the meantime and being able to get a DT out with those overlords down on the front could be a big boon. But in the meantime, Mittak tacking on some additional hatchery. So he's going to transition this to five hatchery play. He's got an overwhelming amount of overlords here on the front. Now diving! Able to take out one cannon. That was a mistake, especially not bringing all his Hydralisk if he was going to go for the attempt. But I think that was... It's not going to cost him, but that uh, th those maneuvers like that will give an opportunity for Raj to get right back in it. Just needs to get the drone count high, saturate that third, and keep the Hydralisks moving towards the front. Maybe drop an evolution chamber. Looks like instead he's moving his way towards Lair. Corsair's again trying to work on those overlords to open something up. But the Hydralisks right there, so that's going to be a free Corsair kill. Didn't even get the overlord. Weaken them up, soften them up a little bit. That at least draw the Hydralisks back slightly to give some breathing room on the front. Burrow being researched, of all things. I would have not expected that at this stage. We have some additional gateways being dropped. Maybe this is a, a ploy to burrow the Hydralisks at the front. Let the units walk by and go for something along those lines. Looks like Unoverlord is going to get caught here. I don't see any Hydralisks making any movement to go ahead and rescue that Overlord, and I think that might have been a misrally as well. Something... We do have a creep colony defensively on the front. I'm a little bit shocked to see Mitek going for any sort of defense, considering how much he's crippled Raj here to the start. He's got plenty of Hydralisks. 
Overlord taking down that's putting him in the red. That's actually allowing Raj to go ahead and get the supply lead. However, that's not in army composition. That's primarily in workers. 43 workers on two bases with... I don't think he's going to have a shot at a third for quite some time. He's only got five zealots. He does have plus one weapons. He's going to have to rely on some brilliant size storms. Overbuilt cannons. Definitely at his natural expansion. So isn't going to be... Yeah, they're burrowing the hydralis. So that's not going to be bustable. But at the same time... <clears throat> that's going to delay him. And if Mitek can just keep the overlords pumping, keep his... He is starting to fill in that drone count. And keep the hydralisks in sufficient numbers. He should be able to turn this into a pretty sizable and difficult to breach contain. Plus one weapons is now going to complete ahead of plus one weapons for the hydralisks. However, that plus one weapons is not all that far behind. Should be a minute before Lurker Tech is out there. I don't... And the robotics facility just starting. Cannon's now getting taken out to open up troop movement, although that was an odd one. Uh, I guess that was to free up better assimilator movement there because it was interrupting some gas mining there at the main. Some Dark Templar are being produced. There isn't... Uh, is Overlord Speed? Overlord Speed's a ways away, and actually the Overlords have moved out of position near that third. There's only a single Hydralisk sitting there. So that Dark Templar actually might be able to get some chaos done. We'll have to see. Starting to move out. Going to check out that third. Sees a single Hydralisk and, and nothing else. Kind of an interesting play overall. Yeah, now... I think this is going to end up actually working against Mitek overall. So now he, ha now he has to worry about an Overlord out in the field. Or sorry, a Dark Templar out in the field. And his Overlord's going to get taken out. So that's kind of free damage with the Burrow. And I'm not sure that he gets a lot out of this. Aside from... Giving Raj a, a false sense of security, potentially. I think he was maybe... Okay, so the Zealots making their way to the north. We got some Lurkers making their way in. One Lurker going to die before it even burrows. Yeah, so Burrow not helping out a lot here. And now we have some... So now we've got a DT and some Zealots that have snuck out on the map. And that is exactly what you need to do to really punish a Zerg in this situation. Is, is make it where they have to split their forces multiple directions. Where they have to defend on multiple slots. One advantage for Mittak is, is that Observer is not out in the field to help counter those lurkers, but this is an exposed hatchery at the mineral only. If it just gets spotted, that should force a cancellation if he can just move there in time. The Hydralis starting to move there to the high ground. Instead, checking out the six o'clock, and look at this, we got a shuttle alongside. So is this gonna be a Zealot? There's no High Templar, so it looks like this is potentially gonna be a Zealot drop in the main. Very, very clever play from Raj. Checking it out ahead of time, making sure there wasn't, there's not a lot of defenses with that Corsair. So going to elevate her just out of view. And I don't think this is, yeah, I think this is just out of view. Mitak holding a few Hydralisks here, but these Zealots could really create some chaos. The four Zealots have been spotted, but well, looks like the shuttle's not going to provide any backup. And that does save the drones. I will say the burrow very helpful to protect the drones at some counter at the counter position. We're also getting Overlord drop potentially online. Mitek now in a strong position. He just needs to <clears throat> keep the macro up. The evolution chamber being worked on. I don't think the well, maybe the Zealots are gonna get it here. It wasn't upgrading anything, so it's not going to be a massive victory, but that well, it was close. Is he still gonna go for it? He's got a Dark Templar. In the midst here, another evolution chamber being dropped, maybe to also provide a buffer. The Hydra's just going to hold position there. Raj still hasn't grabbed his third. He's got a sizable army to push out and grab it right this second. And Mittak is kind of playing halvesies where he's got a little bit of a defense force out towards that third. But that's not going to be sufficient to stem back that size of an army. Evolution chamber goes down. A lurker there providing support, and simultaneously with that distraction, like all of those Hydralis, I don't think they unburrowed even, got wiped out. So losing a sizable of man, uh, amount of army, Raj now able to establish this 3 o'clock base, but he does need, need to get a move on because this is a lot of hatcheries that are down. Yeah, he took out an evolution chamber. He's got his opponent in the red right this second, and yeah, maybe striking now is the right 
move. Lurker's on to defense the Observer and some Side Storm should be able to clean that up. He's got his opponent in the red and has a sizable supply lead. The Hydra is trying to press in. The Observer quickly picked off. Plus two weapons is there. A second Observer sweeping across. This is attacking uphill, keep in mind, for Raj. One Sunken Colony is constructed. Mittak, however, still losing Overlords, is in the red. And now a 40 supply lead has opened up for Raj and some beautiful size storms across the reinforcements. I think he can still breach this actually if he can draw back at another observer in position and press forward, but there's a little bit of breathing room for Mittak to potentially establish this. The third is getting dropped. Hydralisks posted at other locations. So right now, upgrade advantage. This is unfortunate that that observer, both observers were picked off and that there's not enough side storm to breach because otherwise that would have been a dead base and potentially the snowball situation for Raj to take it. Two more observers now out and adjusting forward. Corsair's just checking the perimeter. It looks like Raj going to reposition, maybe going to go for an assault at that nine o'clock position. Most of the defenses for Mittak at that mineral only. So regroup or reposition and potentially a secondary attack. This is before plus one armor and plus three weapons finishes. Also, I don't think we have Hive Tech in the background. High Templar gets picked off. Another High Templar moving forward doesn't have enough energy for Size Storm. And the Lurker is going to, to send Raj on the defense. I still think, yeah, at near even workers this late in the game, he either needs to grab an additional expansion, which looks like he's attempting to with a lurker sitting there at the three o'clock, or he needs to stop one of these expansions from Mittech ASAP. Instead, floundering a bit mid-map, some Zergling sneaking out, maybe to try to stop this three o'clock, the lurker now burrowing, attacking that photon cannon. The army not there to stop the Zerglings from getting in. And actually, if they can pick off that probe, yeah, going to be able to slow this three o'clock base from constructing. So well worth it. Queen's Nest getting dropped to make the way towards Hive Tech. A slew of lurkers, however, making the way towards that natural expansion to make it very difficult for Raj to get reinforcements out I'm going to go ahead and engage this from the high ground at the reverse position this is also if the high templar can drop size storm on the lurker lines they're fairly well bunched it looks like the zealots ending up on top of them able to carve up some of them a beautiful size storm over the hydralisk line though as it bunched up however there's still too many lurkers and not enough size storm and it looks like the observers have once again gotten separated from the army and potentially picked off, so the Lurker line's going to hold. So the Dragoons, this is plenty of Dragoons, to, especially with the plus three weapons, to engage what's there. But this is allowing mid tech time to go ahead and reinforce the front. So now starting to peck at two locations, engaging the Dragoons. If he can take out this army at the Mineral only, that means those bases are going to be entirely exposed. Lost the Overlords, so those Observers should remain. Zerglings now making their way up to provide some additional support. Some cannons providing a little bit of additional defense. And mid tack unfortunately, not able to get a cohesive attack to wipe those Dragoons out. And Raj maybe now overstepping and moving too far on the low ground, losing the rest of the Dragoons regardless. Some Zelts trying to march back out, but they're pretty well bunched up, which is... But it looks like the... The Lurkers were low enough health that Raj is actually going to be able to open things. I'm a little bit shocked. I actually thought once those Dragoons were down, that was going to be it. Mittak continuing, however, reinforcing, just going for a flood. He now has the supply lead, which is not spell success for Raj. Cannons now getting dropped, and that mineral only very exposed. That three o'clock base very likely going to get wiped out as far as a follow-up. The probe's getting annihilated, and that is going to be GG. Game one. Keep in mind there was someone... I'm trying to think of all the implications of one of the uh, people being uh, eliminated. But... 
we'll move on. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Welcome back to Hostile League. Thanks for listening.